Uncertainty about Greece and Europe weighing on the markets again a day after that big, huge sell-off, however momentary it actually was. Take a look at the Dow over the past two days. So how do you ride this volatility? Let's bring in some experts, including David Bianco, head of U.S. equity strategy at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, Global Research, and that's a long title there, David. Jeremy, <laughs> Je Jeremy Zirin, chief equity strategist at UBS Wealth Management. Thank you. That's a shorter one. And Dr. Doug Hershorn, trading coach at Dr. Doug Dot com, author of Eight Ways to, I assume that says, be great, right, Doug? Yes, to great, great in anything. Eight, eight Ways to Great. Eight, eight ways, ways to become to great. great. Not be great. Eight Ways to Great. Are people <laughs> as afraid as we think they are, Dr. Doug? Oh, yeah. A and, they, and they should be. But what I think was, was actually very interesting about what we saw here is that the fear was triggered in a cascade. So traders are skittish. Across the board, they're all skittish because they don't really trust what's going on. There's a lot of uncertainty with Greece. And as we see, one of your guests commented, when we see the video about Greece, it's real life, people. And then the slightest little crack, the slightest little crack caused a deluge of fear. Computers are skittish, too. Well, they know no fear. They know no fear, and they respond to just react to what they're programmed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what strikes me about, about this, David, also is the fact that there have been very few safe havens. You know, I mean, the gold market had a safe haven status to it, but we've had a lot of people on, on Power Lunch and elsewhere say, protect your, protect your investments, move into the investment-grade bond market. But if you look at what happened to the investment-grade bond market in the last few days, right. it was a rout. You know, and right. that, that also basically undermines confidence, right? Well, it does undermine confidence. I mean, when you have a steep decline, all risk assets tend to sell off. Diversification only helps you so much when, when those sell-offs occur. But there is something to keep in mind. We see the U.S. dollar and we see U.S. Treasury bonds still an area where investors are comfortable fleeing for safety. Now, that is something that's damaging S&P earnings outlook, but it would be a worse, a far worse situation if global investors have lost confidence in the dollar or treasury bond under uh, these skittish environments. So one thing to keep in mind is that the rule book is, at least when it comes to the dollar being a flight uh, to safety, uh, that's still occurring, and that means that the U.S. does not have the problems that something yeah, but Yes, the death has. of the dollar is greatly exaggerated. Exactly. Huh? It certainly, well, absolutely. certainly was. But, Jeremy, you know, speak to me about the fact that the cost of insuring corporate debt in the United States. It came in this morning after we've heard rumors that Greece may indeed get, and there may be a line of credit for some of the banks, but it widened out dramatically, and that's not a good sign. It, it, to me, it's a danger sign of more to come in the investment grade market. Well, I think overall what we're seeing is just a, a broader de-risking by investors, and it's ra rather reflexive given the volatility that we saw yesterday, you know, for, between 230 and 245, and just the decline that we've seen in risk appetite over the past week or so. But I think that if you think, look at the corporate bond market, uh, you know, what you see is that cor U.S. corporate balance sheets are, are still in very good shape. We're in the process of an economic and, and, and more importantly, a very robust corporate profit recovery. And I, I think that, you know, we've seen a very sharp move in, in credit spreads and equity markets as well over the past 14 months. So it's not it's overly surprising to see some of that give, give back. David, in anything in the last 24 hours that makes you say, okay, you've got to do something differently here right now? Uh, for me to do something differently, actually, I think this is a sell, this sell-off is an opportunity to uh, to act upon what's mostly our, our existing strategy, uh, play the U.S. recovery. I feel more confident about the U.S. recovery because, as we were discussing before, the silver lining here is low U.S. interest rates as investors worldwide flee for safety. That's going to support the housing market. That's an important thing. And I'm still encouraged about global growth, particularly the global growth opportunities of many industrial and technology, consumer staple companies that the S&P has, where, as Jeremy said, the balance sheets truly are strong, and they're replicating their business models abroad. Doug, uh, trading coach, Doug, can you coach for what happened yesterday? Absolutely. And, and here's what goes on with the trader's mind. They look at this as there are two types of fear. Fear and greed don't drive market, markets. Fear and fear drives markets. Yeah. People don't understand that. It's fear of losing money, which is what happens when you go like that. But now it kicks in as a fear of not making money, not capitalizing opportunities. So the best traders out there, they're keeping what they call dry, dry powder on the sideline. They're managing the risk of the portfolio and waiting for windows of opportunity to capitalize. Let me, co let me go to David to that very point. Are we getting to a point in Europe, David, right now, where there, where there is actually opportunity to put money to work 
uh, in some of the lesser exposed economies or sectors of the European stock markets. Right. As a house, we are bullish on the European stock market. Uh, we recognize that there's more uncertainty with the big banks and the financial system in Europe. But the non-financials in Europe, these are companies that have also lots of linkages to emerging markets. So I'd say to investors, uh, look at the non-financials of Europe, and that's a good place to European add, exporting too. companies is basically yeah. what you're talking about European here, right? Right, yeah, right. That's right. European exporters, they're going to benefit from their weaker currency. And the key thing to realize here, while Southern Europe is going to have lots of pressures owing to austerity, mm -hmm. uh, the core of Europe, Northern Europe, those economies, their manufacturing and export-oriented economies, might pick up steam owing to the weakness of Jeremy, Europe. Jeremy, your assessment of opportunity in Europe and whether, as we see this big sell-off over there, is actually, as Tyler's pointed out, maybe a time to buy. Well, I would agree with David points to a degree that you know we will see some of the more fiscally stronger countries and that are more export dominated, like a Germany, should benefit both from you know from the weaker euro. But we are still seeing. You know, I think it's a bit too early to jump into European equities here. I think regionally we would prefer the fundamentals in the emerging market complex, where you have much stronger structural growth uh, within the within those areas, and valuations have come back, and that area has really lagged year to date. So we think the best you know combination of valuation and you know f fundamentals as well as well as, you know, in terms of the risk of financing conditions not decreasing is in the emerging market area. David, the thing that worries me, though, about Europe is the lack of political will to actually oh, address yes. the problem yes. on a broad basis. I, I totally understand what you're saying about Northern Europe. Right. But at the same time, there is a lack of political will to solve this. And we have some of the, the banks in Europe trading at, at swap levels that are worse than when Lehman was taken out, worse than when Bear was taken out. They, it smells like 08 over there. Right. Well, the ECB has a good reputation for fighting inflation. The ECB has to strengthen its reputation for being willing to take actions to fight panics. And I, I, I think there's some... Uh, there are some uh, slownesses in their responsiveness that make investors fear that uh, if things get worse, they might not be ahead of the curve. So there are contagion risks. Uh, but that said, I think you still have good opportunities in Europe. And my focus is on the U.S. equity market. And as Jeremy said, uh, there are great ways to play what's going on in Asia and recognizing that Asia is probably later in its economic cycle. So I right. think you want to play it with things like U.S. technology companies and U.S. and European industrial companies. Okay. David, thank you very much, Doug. Thanks to you and to Jeremy as well.